Yeah, soldiers, it is your boy, the Anime Stage Country Room video, and this is What If Naruto Was the Sage of Six Paths Part 1 Remastered. Yes, I am remastering a cult classic that I made two years ago. Now, I hope you guys enjoy this video. Shout out to you guys for watching the video and watch until the end. That's all I can say to you guys. Shout out to my social medias. They are on screen. And now, without further ado, let us get right into the story. All right, like last time, in case some of y'all are living under a rock and have never seen the series before, I'm going to answer the question on how Hagoromo will reincarnate into Naruto. Hagoromo on his deathbed will be aware that, one, Indra and Ashra will be in a thousand year long feud with each other, and two, that Indra or his descendants will try to take the power of Ashra. And as a result of knowing this, he will take another measure. Since he knows his chakra will traverse throughout the ages, he casts a jutsu that will allow his chakra to one day reincarnate into a new person, in an effort to one day bring his sons together in their inevitable thousand year long feud or end it completely by more violent methods. However, due to his weakened state, this will take a pretty long while. He also hopes to give his host a lot of women because one, he's an old man, and the number one rule of any anime is that old men have to be perverts. Two, he is a sage of six paths, so let's call him a prequel to our good old buddy, Pervy Sage. And three, his host will have godly power. And he's gonna probably be too much to handle for one woman if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Alright, let me stop. The Pervy Sage will smile as he looks forward to reincarnation and will then die. A lot of stuff happens while he's in the long process of his reincarnation, that being the entire history of Naruto. Until one day we reach the birth of Naruto. The birth is a success like in canon and then he'll be taken away by a masked man who we know as Obito. Meanwhile, in the mindscape of Naruto, Hagarum will open his eyes as he takes in his surroundings and realizes he is in the body of a baby, and that said baby has been kidnapped as he watches the world through the eyes of a young baby Naruto. He is annoyed that he is in the body of a baby after being able to watch everything in the world for a long time, but it's not a big deal as he can start training said baby when he is older. A bunch of stuff happens like in canon except Hagoromo is watching the events unfold. Like in canon, Karam will try to kill baby Naruto but will stop as he senses an all too familiar chakra. F father is that you? Kurama asks. Mianto has no idea what the fox is talking about, but doesn't care as he successfully seals the fox, one half inside him and the other in Naruto. The Yang half, huh? It's irrelevant, but if I wasn't in this boy, he would have struggled to get along with the Nine Tails. I am also sorry for this boy's mother and father, but it could be worse. Fanes could have ended like they did with my mother. He concludes with a sad voice. Meanwhile, in the real world, Manta will have the opportunity to say some last words to his son that he couldn't really do in canon. I'm... Sorry I'm not gonna be there for you, Naruto. I hope you grow up and have a life full of love, friends, and happiness. Listen to your elders and work hard. You'll become great that way. I love you, my son. And so does your mother, of course. Although, I can't express that as well as your mother can. So, I'll leave the rest to her. Goodbye, my son. Mianto then stumbles before Kushina catches him. They share one last kiss before Kushina gives a last goodbye of her own as she feels the life slowly drain out of her. I'm so sorry, Naruto. I'm so sorry I'm not going to be there for you. Your father is right. I do love you, and I wish I could be there to raise you. Promise me, Naruto. You will practice good hygiene, make friends, and make sure you follow the free shinobi prohibitions. And no matter how strong you become, Please, never become arrogant. Oh, and make sure you are careful around girls until you're older, mister, and don't break their hearts. I know you'll do great things one day, and I know you'll be in great hands, so be your best. I love you, my little Naruto. Bye, my son. Kushina then will be attended by Hiruzen before the canon stuff happens, where he will be tasked with taking care of Naruto, which we know very well that he's going to fail to do that. While Hagoromo is in Naruto's mindscape, weeping. 
He has seen a lot of heartache and suffering. He should be numb to this. So, why is he crying over this? Is it because one of his descendants has died right in front of him? Is it because he already has an attachment to his host, feeling bad that he is now without parents? Is it because he is remembering moments with his mom before she went crazy? Or is it because he is thinking back to when he was a parent and sympathizes a lot with Mito and Kashina? Or maybe it's all of the above. Whatever the case is, Hagoromo vows to make Naruto's life as enjoyable as possible and will reveal himself when the time is right. Although for now, he has to greet one of his children. Kurama will look around in Naruto's mindscape and call for his father, who will appear before him for the first time in many, many years. Father, is that really you? He asks, not believe in his eyes. It is Kurama. How are you, my son? Hagoromo asks. Father, why? Why did you have to die? Why did you have to leave? Why are you here now? Do you know how much I have suffered? Hagoromo will then hug his child. I'm sorry, my son. I'm sorry I couldn't be with you until now. I'm here now, aren't I? Kurama nods as he smiles, tears in his eyes before Hagoromo tells him his circumstances for why he is here and what has happened in the last couple hundred years. Kuruma will be angry that Black Zetsu has been causing a lot of the suffering in his life, all because he wants to resurrect the woman that made his father suffer. He then asks, Any particular reason you chose this body? Well, Hagarum begins, The jutsu I used to reincarnate myself took a very long time for it to finally take effect. It was just a coincidence that I ended up in this kid. Astra's chakra also happened to be trying to enter this kid's body, but I ended up kicking it out, and it went somewhere else. And yes, I will be training this kid, of course. Then, I will help as well, Kurama says. He needs to better control my power, after all. Not control. No more of that. You two will develop a friendship. It's about time we start changing the relationship between tail beasts and humans, Hagoromo says, and Kurama just smiles. Time passes and Naruto is four, and he'll be dealing with the glares of the villagers because of Donzo, of course. When he goes to sleep that night, he'll be brought into a sewer, or as we all know it to be, his mindscape. He'll then see a massive fox behind bars next to an old man in white robes. Welcome, Naruto. We have been waiting for you. Naruto will ask if this is a dream, and Hagoromo will shake his head. He will then introduce himself and Kurama, to which Naruto will be scared, but Kurama will put out his paw. Naruto will hop on it, and then after fueling the fur, will decide to lay on his paw. And then, a little bit later, he will then decide to play on the fox. Kurama can't help but smile, because after seeing Naruto stream from the villagers, he felt pretty bad for him, even though under normal circumstances, he probably wouldn't have cared. Four years of your father back can change a person. Hagarum afterwards will explain that he is the sage of six paths, and Naruto will be wowed, of course. And then, he will get an extra surprise. His parents, smiling at him, near a corner by the jail cell. Hagoromo will introduce them as Naruto's parents, and Naruto, tears rolling down his face, will run up to them as we have a nice moment here, as Mianto and Kushina will tell him that they will always love him, and they are sorry that they can't be there to raise him, while Mianto apologizes for the villagers' treatment of Naruto. Naruto says he is happy to have his parents, as he didn't know if he would ever ever meet them in his life. Kushina and Minato will say the same thing, and they will say that they know Kuruma and Hagoromo will take good care of him, and then they disappear as their time has run out. Hagoromo will then tell Naruto that his train schedule starts tomorrow, and that he can't say anything about this to anyone, of course. Naruto promises he won't, 
and then will leave his mindscape as it is time for him to get up. Naruto will wake up and will then say, was that all a dream? To which Kurama will say, no, from inside him. Naruto's train will then begin, and he will primarily get into Taijutsu and exercises good enough for a toddler. On top of that, he is also on a strict diet, so no ramen for Naruto. At least, not all the time. If Hagoromo is going to take care of Naruto, he has to make sure he gets all the nutrition he needs, after all. Naruto will also learn from Hagoromo that he has some Kage Genkai he can unlock, since Naruto is his reincarnation. Naruto to ask what that means, but Hagrumu will say he will tell him later, once he takes care of some business in his mind, of course. Let's go over the highlights of Naruto's training these past few years. Time for Naruto to enter the academy. After four years of training, Naruto is pretty much ahead of his classmates. He is physically stronger in comparison to other kids in his class, and is better in Taijutsu than them. He has a Shadow Clone Jutsu in his canon, as Hagrumu taught to him earlier since he knew there was no way in hell nor to be able to use the regular clone jutsu in addition he also learns tree walking has a bit of access to kurama's chakra in case he needs it and will also acquire the Sharingan. How? Well, the answer comes when Hagram takes Naruto into his mindscape once again. He's taken into a room next to Kurama's cell, and it is a chart that shows all of Hagoromo's abilities. What is this? Naruto asks. This is something I made to show you what powers you can obtain from me. The ones that are on the verge of being unlocked will flicker, and when it is finally unlocked, it will fully light up. Naruto looked to see what is on the verge of being unlocked, and it is a Sharingan. He is at first shocked, but Hagoromo notes that since Uchiha are his descendants, and he at one time had a Sharingan before he got his Renegon, he is eligible for that same Keke Genkai. Naruto is pretty pumped and will also ask when he will get the Renegon, to which Hagoromo responds, probably before I did the rate you are going. This news makes Naruto pretty excited. Naruto will also be told that he will experience a couple things as the reincarnation of the Sage of Six Paths. One, he will start to look more like Hagoromo as he grows older, basically a blonde version of the Sage of Six Paths. And two, of course, he is going to be extremely powerful. That doesn't mean he can slack on his train, of course. Because even if there's a path of success guaranteed, nothing in life is really guaranteed, and nothing should stop you from grinding. This is more of me talking, not Hakurama, but still, it's at least some worthy advice to follow. It's also something that Naruto can easily agree with. Anyways, by around the time Naruto enters the academy or while he's in it, he finally unlocks the Sharingan. During his academy days as well, he does very well in academics, which makes sense since Hakurama is helping him out. Eventually, though, Things kinda change a little bit when Uchiha Massacre happens. Hagoromo is sad that all of his ascents are starting to die out, so what is the logical thing Naruto can do? Get an <clears throat> Arum, of course. Naruto's like, huh? But Hagoromo explains that with his ascendants dying out over the years, he wants his ascents to become fruitful, large, and happy like they should have been with the births of Indra and Ashura. Naruto then says, well, when I have to sign up for this thing called the CRA or something? Uh, no, you can just do it. There's no law that says you can't take on multiple wives, and besides, the CRA is only a thing in fanfics, Hagoromo answers. What the hell is a fanfic, Naruto asks. But, but, y you, never mind. Hagoromo just drops the subject while also thinking, probably does not want to know about some of the fanfics that have been created using his likeness. I can hear you, what do you mean, sensei? Just drop it! I'll tell you when you are older, Hagoromo snaps, not wanting to scar the poor boy. Anyways, over the years, Naruto will get stronger and will be pretty strong by the end of his academy days with three elemental natures unlocked with a bullet jutsu for each type in fire, wind, and lightning. You will get earth and water when you unlock wood release, Hagoromo tells him, which Naruto is pretty excited to hear. He also gets the free Tamois of the Sharingan while also improving in Sharingan Genjutsu. Only downside is he cannot show off any of his Keke Genkai at the moment because it would look very, very suspicious. In addition, Naruto over the academy years will form friendships with good old Shikamaru and Shino, as well as form the potential for relationships with free girls, Ino, Sakura, and Hinata. And in the future, they'll be okay with sharing them. Why? I don't know, because Naruto is awesome, I guess, and they have each formed friendships they don't want to destroy over a guy, especially when said guy has forced him to improve a lot. Remember, guys. Sasuke destroys friendships, Naruto forms new ones. Anyways, Naruto will take the graduation test and will pass with ease, making him Rick of the Year, which means he's going to get a lot of attention later, including from people like Rock Lee. 
Naruto plan to take his girls, who we plan on dating after graduating, on a nice celebration party or something, but that ends quickly as he sees Mizuki with the scroll. And despite Mizuki trying to traumatize Naruto like he did in canon, Naruto is different here as he is aware that he has the fox. Plus, he's a lot stronger in comparison to canon, and Mizuki was always pretty weak, so Mizuki gets packed up with another Shao clone rush. Anyways, after going on some dates over the week and finally unlocking wood release, we have the team selection incoming, and Naruto is on a team with his buddy Shino and Hanada. His sensei will be Koronai, of course, and with the introductions, there are going to be some differences with the goals of these characters. Naruto has this dream of becoming Hokage, so a pretty large family, and wants to bring peace to the Shinobi world, since Hagoromo also told him about how we tried to accomplish peace, but kinda... Failed. Meanwhile, Hinata's goal is to become a strong Kunuichi and start a large family, hopefully with Naruto. Meanwhile, Shino's goal is to become the clan head of the Aburame clan. Kuro and I will be satisfied with their answers and will tell them their test will be tomorrow. When the day arrives, Naruto and company will be tasked with trying to show enough teamwork when finding Kuro and I if you look underneath the underneath, but on the surface, Kuro and I just tells them they have to take her down or capture her. However, since Naruto is smarter in this can due to Kurama and Hagoromo helping him out, he'll be able to look underneath the underneath and will tell his teammates that they need to work together in order to pass this test. In the bow, Naruto will reveal his Sharingan and Kuro and I will be stunned, because why wouldn't she? As Naruto is able to dispel the Genjutsu with his Sharingan and Hanan and Shino do their feign via trying to strike her with the Juken and fire off insects respectively it will end up causing coronite to feel pressed but she's able to break them off of her and she calls an end to the battle since they all show enough teamwork meaning they pass naruto is obviously pumped as is Hinata, while shino is you know he's pretty excited but he doesn't show it Kurona will ask where his gun came from and naruto will answer hidden genes i guess it just appeared one day that's the excuse hagoromo gave him in order to explain his kagegenkai because he wasn't going to be able to keep it hidden forever and since naruto is pretty strong at this point there probably isn't going to be a lot of issues he's going to face as of this moment Although, if he was weaker, there probably would be some problems. Also, there is no way he's going to tell someone that he has the god of the shinobi world inside of him, and he's his reincarnation and all this other nonsense. If you heard someone say that they were the reincarnation of god, you would assume they are on something. Anyways, Ino and Sakura will reveal they pass too when Naruto and Hinata meet up with them later, and Naruto will reward them with smooches and a date later. Later, as Naruto is laying in bed, he thinks to himself, my start to my shinobi career begins here. Know this, sensei. I will work hard. I will have a large family, large enough to make your descendants continue throughout the ages, and I will become the next sage of six paths no matter what. Believe it! Hagoromo and Kurama as well can't help but smile as Naruto's journey has finally begun. Alright, so let's get into everyone's favorite missions, D-Ranks! Yeah, no. <laughs> but they're being done rather quickly by Team 8. This is because Naruto has Wood Release, and when Kuronai asks him how he has this, he just says Hidden Genes. And Kuronai can't complain because, well, she can get these stupid missions over with pretty quickly. In this one month time skip in between Naruto's graduation to the Land of Waves arc, Naruto will get some training, of course. He'll get the war walking chakra exercise, and will start working on learning how to make seals. In particular, Uzumaki sealing courtesy of Hakuromo. In addition, because of the Sage of Six Paths, Naruto will be able to unlock the Mangeko Sharingan without having to kill a close friend or something, and won't have to go through an eye transplant to get the Eternal Mangeko Sharingan. He can just train for that. He also gains the Eight Gates, which is, well, you know, Something that he kind of already had unlocked with Hagram and Karama and could probably have used from the get-go as a kid. But they weren't going to fully risk the effects of the gates until Naruto's body could fully handle it. Because a child using eight gates, that's probably not going to be very good. By the end of the time skip, Naruto, who already could use up to five gates, can now use up to seven. Not only that, he gains some other tricks of his sleep as well as other nature transformations due to the Sharingan and the Shadow Clone trick. If one were to gauge Naruto at the moment, he would probably be overall already high Jonin level. Finally, Naruto will be getting Genjutsu lessons from Kuronai since we have to make her useful somehow. And with how quickly he is learning them, Kuronai has to change her opinion of Naruto from regular prodigy to once in a generation type prodigy. Honestly, should be more accurate she said once in a 1000 years type prodigy but well, i'm just nitpicking here naruto will also be helping out hanada with a gentle fist which stem from instant during one of their dates in the one month time skip naruto and hanada are at a park when they unfortunately encounter neji neji basically says that naruto should not be wasting his time with a weak air like her naruto is set off but hanada tries to calm him down not because she thinks naruto would lose 
but because she does not want Nechi to get splatted. Nechi will take this as a victory and will walk away, or is about to, but, but he can't help himself and decides to leave one last jab. One day you will understand that Hinata is weak and can never change her fate from such, especially compared to you. And you will also understand the concept of fate, that destiny cannot be changed. Naruto will say, we'll see about that. Next time I see you, if you insult Hinata ever again, I'll wipe that smirk off your face. Neji will leave and Hinata will thank Naruto for staying up for her. Naruto will then tell her she will be a great Kunoichi no matter what, that she'll prove Neji wrong, and he will make sure of it. Hinata will just smile, and that brings us back to the present, or I guess the present during the one of time skip, but you get the point. Now we'll get the Furry 2 pawns, which makes her more of a threat compared to her exam self already, and man, I, we've been getting so many important characters out of the way so far, especially Neji. Although, I think I'm forgetting someone. What's her name? 10, 10, 11, 10, 12, 10... Uh, oh right, the swing! It, it played such a huge role in Naruto's development, but man, it, it's such a shame it's not going to be featured in this what if at all, because Naruto actually has a pretty good life ahead of him. I mean, hey, at least I remember it though. I, I mean, who could forget about the swing? However, Hinata is not the only girl friend of Naruto to grow stronger. Sakura herself will learn the Cherry Blossom Genjutsu. Seriously, how did she not learn that? While Ina will get into the fire nature transformation. I mean, it makes sense since Ino's chakra nature is fire. So that's everything that happens in a one month time skip for Naruto, his girlfriends, and yeah, that's about it. Let's move on to Waves. Team 7, who has Kiba instead of Naruto in his can, will take the mission and will encounter the same problems like in Kana, except instead of going on their own, we'll see Kakashi call for backup, and guess who? Naruto and teammate will answer the call. Who are you gonna call? Naruto Busters! Okay, that did not work at all. Anyways, Naruto will give Ino a kiss goodbye and will head to the land of Waves. Time skip to Zabusa's appearance, and as Zabusa traps Kakashi in a water prison, Naruto will appear and knock Zabusa back with a kick. Naruto will ask Kakashi to let him handle Zabusa, and after Kurone convinces Kakashi, Naruto will get to work. He'll be able to match Zabuza and Taijutsu, which stuns the hell out of everyone on Team 7 except, of course, Sakura Haruno. And then Naruto will then use his strong gun to copy any of Zabuza's Jutsu, and will start playing some of mind games that Kakashi did in canon. Then, after smacking Zabuza around some more, Naruto will be in a position to kill Zabuza, but a Tracker Ninja beats him to it, who was not a Tracker Ninja, as Hagurum and Naruto figure it out pretty quickly, but unfortunately, the Tracker Ninja gets away. Later on, everyone on Team 7 will be trained at Tazen's house, while Naruto helps out with the bridge building with his clones, and then will of course set Inari straight. After going out to train in the morning one day, Naruto will meet Haku, who, like in the original series, is a she. The original series in my what if, not, you know, the original Naruto series. If fanfics can get away with this, so can I. <laughs> Naruto and Haku will talk for a bit, and then Haku will say that she is a boy, and Naruto says, really? Then Haku responds, nah, and explains she hides it for safety reasons. She's very vague about this, but we all know there are probably some degenerates in the crime world if you know what I'm saying. As Haku leaves, Naruto will say, tell Zabuza I said hi. Haku will freeze and ask how long did Naruto know she was working with Zabuza. Naruto explains he could sense her chakra was similar to the tracker ninja, but in reality, Hagoromo just told him, as he hasn't unlocked the ability to, well, sense Chakra yet. It's a shame, you're a great girl and I prefer we win fights. My other girls would probably like you. Haku will ask, wait, do you have one of those types of relationships? Naruto nods, saying, yeah, are you gonna judge me for it? Most people would probably call me a playboy. From talking with you, I don't think that's the case. I am curious on the reasons why you have that type of relationship. Haku says, I just so happen to find free girls who like me for who I am and could bear sharing me. As for my goal, I want to have a large family. As for why, well, I can't tell you that just yet. Naruto answers, if we weren't enemies right now, would you have plans to make me part of this family, Haku flirts? If that's what you want, then yes, Naruto answers. Haku is somewhat tempted as she finds Naruto a little handsome, and little does she know, Naruto in the future will be packing 20 inches. Nothing too crazy, I got furry myself. Anyways, I'd probably consider it, but we are fighting on opposite sides. That's too bad. I wonder why you work with Sabusa in the first place, Naruto asks. Haku then tells Naruto about her past, and Naruto definitely feels bad for her. Naruto then say, well, I don't have much to say. I hope that we don't have to kill each other in the end. Good luck on the battlefield. 
Haku nods and will then leave. Later we will get the fight on the bridge and Naruto will challenge both Haku and Zabuza at the same time and will have the advantage and then Gatsu will appear thinking he can defeat Shinobi with hundreds of goons. After Zabuza declares they are no longer enemies, Naruto decides to use a technique he has been trying to perfect for a very very long time. He creates a small wind ball and throws it up to the sky. The wind blows all around then takes the shape into that of a massive bird. Naruto then says, wind release. Ho oh, oh. He fires a Jutsu and destruction devastation kills all the thugs and Gato. Everyone is shocked at Naruto's raw power and Zaza can only think, yeah, I do not want this guy as an enemy. Ever. <laughs> Haku is thinking something along those lines as well. After the battle, Naruto will convince Zaza using people as tools is wrong, or to be more exact, has Zabuza revealed that he does in fact care about Haku as a person somewhere on the line as a father figure. Haku wants to get to know Naruto more and will strike a deal with Zabuza that she will leave with Naruto and will meet with Zabuza again when the time is right. Zabuza will then act like a father figure and warn Naruto not to do anything to hurt Haku, which Naruto will comply with. The bridge will still be called the Great Naruto Bridge like in can. We pick off right with Naruto and company taking Haku back to village after the Land of Ways mission. On the way, Naruto and Haku get a bit closer as they get to know each other, plus Haku seems to hit off well with Hinata and Sakura as she learns more and more about the relationship with naruto remember boys haku the she is here <laughs> anyways we'll fast forward to the group arriving at the village and after arriving to okage tower and some convincing hirusen will allow haku into the village mostly again due to naruto and everyone else vouching for haku as well as the fact that haku has a very rare keke genkai that is no extinct because well reasons haku is made tuning right away due to how strong she is already and could become joining pretty quickly which again makes sense considering Haku's war arc feats. Hakurama will then reveal after all of that to Naruto that he'll be able to unlock ice release as well since Hakurama is the progenitor of all shinobi which excites Naruto. In addition Naruto will also get other types of Keke Genkai and Tota which will excite him even more. Time for a two month time skip. Naruto over the next two months will get the following. The Mangekyo Sharingan that becomes an EMS due to his wood release. These Mangekyo abilities, by the way, are Amaterasu, Kamui, Sukuyomi, and a hidden power Naruto has that I create that I will talk about later when the time comes. Access to Seven Tails were a chakra of Kurama, leaving him only two tails away from using Kurama's full power. Ice Release, which allows him to work on the Ice Mirror technique Haku used, and it also gives him opportunities to train with Haku as well. When Haku asks how Naruto has Ice Release, Naruto sticks with the Hidden Genes excuse. Back to the list of stuff Naruto gets over two months, he gets into Kenjutsu, which I'll get into the full details of that train in a bit. Finally, he gets further into Uzumaki's ceiling. So, Naruto's kind of doing pretty good in terms of learning jutsus and other stuff. Now, time to get into the training of the rest of Naruto's Arum, but first, new additions. Haku and Tenten. Through the training she does with Naruto and her interactions they have together, in addition to the already blossoming chemistry they already had back in Waves, Naruto will get with Haku, which was obvious from the beginning. Tenten, however, is a different story. He meets her during the two months time skip when she coincidentally sees him training in a unoccupied train ground, and she's impressed by our boy's skills. She walks up to Naruto and will introduce herself, and after a bit of talking, both will become friends. Naruto and Tenten will start training together and actually get into weapons training. Again, with Naruto getting into Katana from Tenten's weapon shop. By the way, Katanas are the best sword, fight me. Over time, Tenten learns about Naruto's life and such, and will be okay of being part of Naruto's Aram. After Naruto beats Tenten in a fight to decide who will decide the spot for their first date, they go to that barbecue place Choji like to eat at, Yakinku Q. I can't really think of anything else, as the restaurant world building of Naruto is kinda non-existent. Tenten loves a date and it ends with a kiss, and Naruto gets another girl. Catch him, catch him, gotta catch him all. Gotta catch them all, Naruto! Oh, anyway, to so Naruto's girls training, we will see Sakura get better in Genjutsu, while Ino gets more into some fire release jutsu, a lot of overall improvement to her Yamanaka techniques. Hinata, meanwhile, will learn the 64 palms, which will help her and Naruto complete one mission. Give Neji a middle finger. Well, more like trying to prove him wrong, but the same thing. 
Haku herself due to train with Naruto, what gets the new ice creations and in addition has made the ice mirror technique stronger. Finally, Tenten will gain the lightning nature transformation and will improve on her weapons train. In particular, using a sword or Ken Jisu to do sparring with Naruto and his sword. Don't take that the wrong way. Now you might ask, wait, is Tenten's chakra nature lightning? Nope. Actually, she doesn't have a chakra nature, at least not one that's stated. I'm serious. Out of the Konoha 12 that can use Ninjutsu or Genjutsu, Tenten does not have a listed chakra nature. Why? Kishimoto probably forgot about her. I, I don't know. Anyways, Hagram and Kuruma are having a conversation on Naruto's progress. Kuruma will say to Hagram that Naruto is definitely progressing at such a rapid pace. He will definitely be like you very soon and will probably surpass you. Hagram will nod and say, While he has some ways to go, you are very correct, Kuruma. He has learned the eight gates and is progressing in Taijutsu very quickly. He is progressing well in Uzumaki ceiling and has many powerful ninjutsu techniques and is learning more as we speak. And will probably have every ninjutsu technique in his arsenal by the time he reaches 15. And that's me believing he wants to do so or won't start creating more jutsus as well. He has powerful Sharingan techniques with his EMS and will probably soon be able to combine his Susanoo with a potential Biju mode. Kurma nods, and then Hagram will also comment on how Naruto's girlfriends have progressed and cannot wait for the many powerful and fruitful descents you will have in the future. Now we can finally start the tuning exams arc. With the progress of Mega Project Naruto, Hinata, and even Shino, who has been getting stronger as a result of not wanting to fall too far behind Naruto and Hinata, Kuronai enters her team in the tuning exams, like in canon. Meanwhile, as Naruto walks alone, he will see Kiba and Sakura in a bit of a scuffle with the Sand siblings, as Konkuro is holding up Konohamaru like in canon. Naruto will get Konohamaru out of there after smacking Konkuro in the face, and then we have canon events happen, which involves Gara appearing and scaring the living crap out of Tamari and Konkuro. That is, until Gara looks at Naruto and says, Mother says you're her father. Mother is very interested in you. Tamara and Konkro, who are used to Gara being insane, are left perplexed. Hagaroma will then talk to Naruto and say, This child has Shukaku. I'm going to talk to him using telepathy. Just act a bit normal. Naruto will comply. Hagaroma will then say to Shukaku, Shukaku, is that you, my child? Inside the mind of Gara, the Shukaku says, Father? It's really you! Why are you here? How are you alive? Hagram will then say, This boy is my reincarnation, and I have been training him since he was four. I kinda understand what you're saying. Father, what do you want me to do? Hagram will then tell Shikaku to stop hurting Gara and making him insane and allow him to get some sleep. Shikaku will then say, I will, Father. I'll do anything for you. Also, could you fix his seal? It's kind of not that well made. After that, Naruto seals Gara properly, and Gara will say he no longer hears the voice of Shikaku. Gara will thank him, as will Tamari and Konkuro, and Gara says he cannot wait to challenge Naruto in the training exams, which makes all present parties intrigued. Tamari also happens to take a bit of an interest in Naruto. After Kuronai lets her team know they've been selected for his training exams, the team will get in some last minute training while Naruto also takes his girls out on dates. Fast forward to Trini exams. As Naruto enters the hall, Hagarum will then tell Naruto Ashra's reincarnation is near. Naruto will nod in understanding as he already knows Sasuke is Indra's reincarnation and that Hagarum could not find Ashra after kicking him out of Naruto's body. Later, the group will enter the exam hall and Naruto will encounter Kabuto, but will not trust him in this can due to the advice of Hagarum. Then, Naruto will see a girl with blonde hair and Hagarum will reveal that it is a two chills in Cherokee. Yes, Yugito is in these tuning exams, aged down to around Naruto's age, by the way. And she's not the only new contender for these tuning exams, as Omui, Karwe, and Samui are here as well. Samui being aged down, of course. 
I always used to think that Samui was around Naruto's age for a while, and I don't know why. Moving on to the first exam, Naruto will dominate that one pretty easily with Sharingan and Determination, and everyone who made it in canon will make it in, along with the new Cloud Ninja. Next, we have the Force of Death. It would have been a breeze if it wasn't for the fact that Naruto had to deal with Orochimaru when Hagoroma told him Sasuke was in trouble. He leaves a clone for his scene while he heads to Sasuke's location. When he makes it there, he makes his presence known with a simple kunai thrown at Orochimaru as he is fighting Team 7. Orochimaru, overconfident that he can beat this new brat, gets humbled pretty quickly after taking a massive shot to stomach at blinding speeds by Naruto, causing him to cough up blood. Orochimaru will then try to strike him, but Naruto fires off Wood Locusts, which are a creation that he made with Wood Release, that explode, and Orochimaru takes a bunch of damage from the blast. Orochimaru will then get thrashed about, and there isn't anything Orochimaru can really do. This puts Orochimaru in a state that he has not really been in for a very long time. Fear and panic. Orochimaru will crawl away and say, Stay back! Please, don't hurt me, please. Naruto has broken him down with how well he has dominated Orochimaru. And now the only thing the snake can do is beg. For you see, Orochimaru now sees Naruto is not a boy. He is a god. And he has incurred the god's wrath. Naruto just utters one word from his mouth. Run. And... The snake will do just that. Team 7 will thank Naruto and he will leave him be, but will have a clone stay with him on standby in case he tries to come back or some other trouble happens. They would end up encountering the sound game the next day afterwards. Zaku and Dose would die at the hands of Naruto, and instead of killing off Ken, Naruto decides to take her in for questioning. Meanwhile, as all that is happening, Naruto would encounter a girl along the way with red hair, who has just been separated from her teammates. She she introduces herself as Karin, and Naruto will then politely introduce himself as well. Hagoromo will then say from Naruto's mind, It's her! Naruto will then ask Hagoromo, What do you mean? Hagoromo will say, She is the reincarnation of Ashura. Naruto's eyes widen in absolute shock. Naruto will talk to Karin for a bit, and she seems like she is from the Hidden Grass Village, and Naruto will be impressed as she does seem to be somewhat competent, and strong, but her teammates are kind of incompetent themselves, which is a bit of a yikes. Naruto will send Karin on her way, and then Naruto will go to the tower to meet with his team. Naruto will get there, and his teammates will be able to reach the tower before Gara and his teammates. When Sakura and Team 7 arrive, Naruto is glad to see her team is safe, and Sakura thanks Naruto for protecting her and her teammates, of course, and they'll share a kiss. A little bit later, Yugito and the Cloud Trio arrive as well, which means we're going to have some new teams here in the Chunin exams. Oh yeah, one more, Karin and her team, but barely. From a narrow perspective, it definitely makes sense for Karin to be here as one she is a reincarnation of Ashura and it would be a bit wrong of me to have Karin not involved in this tournament in some way and her to just be I guess <laughs> elimination fodder. Karin will walk in room and she thinks Sasuke is kind of attractive and might be interested in him but then again what girl wasn't interested in Sasuke and the entirety of Naruto? Well I guess Hinata for one. Anyways <laughs> let's get into the preliminaries. With these preliminaries we're gonna have a lot of matchups as here we have three new teams for neutral canon. The Cloud Tree with Sami, Karin, Omui, Yuito and her Cloud Ninja fodder team and of course Karin and her Grass Ninja fodder. Yeah if you haven't guessed it anyone who gets the Far Ninja is gonna get an automatic win and of course Kabuto leave for this one because he has no purpose here and a big thing here is if Kabuto leaves he makes the matchups even. Since we have no sound getting. So let's go through the new preliminaries. First off is Yugito versus Misumi. Yugito is able to use her Fireball Jutsu deal with Misumi along for Kali Reflexes and Misumi will get clapped by Yugito. Naruto is very impressed by Two Tails and Shuriki and will give her a thumbs up and of course Yugito will blush and be excited because Naruto knows her and she did very well in her match. Next up is Tamari versus Omoe. I cannot see Omoe being Tamari here and couple of Tamari wanted to impress Naruto herself. She will take the win with a win Scythe Jutsu that that will end up knocking Omoe down for the count. Tamari will look at Naruto, winks him, and Naruto just smiles. Then, next matchup is Shikamaru versus the second grass ninja fodder. This is Duffer Shikamaru, moving on. Anyways, next up is Samui versus Kiba. Now, this is a bit tough because I can see either one win here. Samui in this one would be barely able to edge out Kiba here, however, as she is just more motivated by wanting to show off for Naruto. She uses one of her Lion Cell Jutsu in the Lion Cage to finish Kiba off, which will give Samui the victory. 
After some blushing and, and some stares between Samui and Naruto, our next matchup is Shino versus Choji. This one is pretty obvious, it's Shino. I mean, it's, Choji is just way too big with his attacks and Shino can just drain his shock over time. Moving on, next up is Sasuke versus Karui. Oh look, another girl and she wants to impress Naruto. But Karui is not going to be able to get her win here as Sasuke is Sasuke. Sasuke can dodge her sword for, with his Sharingan. And since Sasuke is not limited by the curse mark here, Sasuke can fight full strength and will take the dub. Sakura will congratulate him, Naruto will give him a thumbs up, and Hagoromo will be very proud of the reincarnation of Indra. Anyways, next matchup is Ino versus Sakura. Yep, this matchup is back, but it's going to be a lot better. However, the edge here will actually go to Sakura. She'll be able to use her mind more, especially since she has a more foundation here in this can due to train with Naruto. While Ino has her Yamanaka techniques, Sakura has shown to have a bit more intelligence, and with having Genjutsu's like the tree buying technique, Ino is not going to be able to counter her at all, and Sakura will be able to knock her out and will go on to the next round. Next up is Hinata versus Yoroi. And now we'll win this matchup as she will destroy him with the furry two palms and her newly acquired speed with her train with Naruto, and we'll be able to beat Yoroi and move on to the next round. Next up, Tenten versus Gara. While Tenten has improved in this what if due to Naruto train with her, she is not going to be able to match up with Gara at all. However, good news for her is that Gara is mellowed down in this canon since he, the Shikak was sealed in this timeline. Plus, Naruto is in Gara's favor, and he's not going to hurt people close to him, so yeah, Tenzin's not going to have like how Lee did in the original timeline. Speaking of Lee, by the way, he's going to be facing off against some Cloud Ninja Fodder, while Neji faces off against Grass Ninja Fodder. Both these two move on, I don't need to explain why. Finally, we get Conqueror versus Karin. Hmm, let's see how strong Karin is in this timeline. Karin has access to the Water Chakra nature, and she has a Water Bolt and Water Prison Jutsu, and knowing that in this canon, she has access to some Gen Jutsu, which is pretty good for her, and has access to the Shaokun Jutsu, which she can utilize pretty well because she has massive Chakra Reserves since she's an Uzumaki. Meanwhile, Conqueror is the same as his original canon counterpart, so Karin's gonna end up beating him here. This is mostly because Conqueror does not want to use the full power of the Crow here with the Poison Blades and stuff, while also Karin being a bit of a censor, so yeah, Karin's gonna take a bit of an easy dub. A little while later, Naruto will talk with Tamari, Karui, Yugito, and Sami a bit more, use his charms and stuff, and we'll get dates with them. Again, Naruto catching girls like it's freaking Pokemon. <laughs> Anyways. Now let's move on to the third round matches for the Shunin exams. First up is Sasuke vs. Yugito. Two Tails and Chiriki vs. Sasuke Uchiha. Should be good. Karin vs. Shikamaru. Another good matchup as we got an improved Karin, who has a new trick to sleeve in his timeline, and Shikamaru, a lazy guy who is the most intelligent guy in the series, objectively. But I think there's a clear winner here. Next matchup is Rock vs. Samui. Now, despite me giving Samui a bit of a buff in this timeline, well, I guess you could call it a deep up since she's the same age as Naruto in this timeline and she's a Genin, but you get what I mean. She doesn't have a chance against Rock Lee, so <laughs> let's stop the cap. Next up is Sakura versus Gara. An improved Gara in terms of sanity versus an improved Sakura in terms of skill. It's definitely going to be a good matchup, but no, there's a clear winner here. And finally, we have a Battle Royale match with Naruto versus Hinata versus Neji. Yeah, we have something crazy going on right now. So I know you guys have put in the comments, why not a back to back or something like that? And the reason is because Naruto is just way too freaking strong in this timeline. And if he had a back to back, it just wouldn't be too easy for Naruto. This gives him a bit more of a challenge since he has two opponents coming at him at once. Time for the meme with Jiraiya. As Kuro and I will tell, Naruto so much to train with him, and of course, it's the legendary Sanin and the legendary pervert himself. Naruto is pretty hype and wants to know what Jiraiya wants to teach him, but Jiraiya says he'll show him when they get to it. Jiraiya also says, I would love to get to, to know you a lot more since you seem to have a nice group of ladies with you. And then Naruto kind of realizes right then and there that Jiraiya is going to be a bit of a pain in the butt, but he's not going to care about it too much. And the reason for this is most because he's lived with a thousand year old pervert sage for his entire life. Anyways, <laughs> Naruto will train with Jiraiya and Jiraiya will allow him to learn Rasengan and get the Toe contract. He learns some other techniques as well, but those are going to be kept hidden for now. And finally, we have to get to Ksuchi Ken. She was captured by the Leaf Village and put into interrogation thanks to our boy Naruto, and Naruto decides to pay her a visit. When he gets there, Naruto will say, well, seems you're enjoying your time here. Kim will lash out, saying it's not enjoyable at all, and she cannot wait to be free as she has one month before that can happen as 
she knows that Orochimaru is playing something big, but she doesn't really know what it is. Naruto point out, and where are you gonna go after that? Cam will look down as she doesn't really have anywhere to go because Orochimaru will probably kill her since she was captured like this, so she can't go back to the sound. Naruto says, you could always live here with me, and we could get to know each other. Kim will say, why should I do that? You're the one who put me in this situation. And I can get you out of it, Naruto counters. Plus, even though you work for a snake weirdo, I've heard you're not a bad person. At least based on Inuichi's psych evaluations. Everyone at least deserves a second chance, after all. Ken will think about it, and she wonders if she should accept the offer. She then asks if she can recommend one other girl who is under the clutches of Orochimaru, and Naruto will say, of course. Ken will give out a name, Naruto will say that he'll get him out of that snake's clutches, and then Kim will accept the offer. And then afterwards, Naruto will continue to train until the third round of the shooting exams finally arrives. Meanwhile, Rushmar has been very bothered by how the force of death turned out. He is kind of scarred from what Naruto did to him, as Naruto essentially destroyed him in every way possible while not being even classified as anything but a lowly Genin. From a combat perspective, he was outclassed by a Genin. From a Jutsu perspective, he was outclassed by a Genin. And from every perspective or angle you can look at, he was just outclassed by a 12-year-old Genin. Orochimaru now wants revenge. He will invade the Leaf and outright kill Hiruzen and that boy. He will show that he is a Sanin. And at this point, he is losing his logic and sanity because of how much he was dominated by Naruto in their fight. So, this will cause him to break off the deal with the Sand. And... That means Gar and San Silenso won't have to interfere anymore. And that also means that Rushmar is going to be attacking the Leaf Village alone with only the Sound Village. Because at this point, he is not making the best decisions due to how thoroughly scarred he has been by Naruto. The day of the tournament arrives, Naruto heads to the arena, but Rushmar will be on his radar as Hakuren t- tells him that something bad is going to happen today, mostly involving the snake. Naruto is not afraid of this because he already knows he can probably stop whatever Rushmar has planned. And when all the contestants gather for the tournament, all of a sudden, giant snakes appear, and the guy who rides on top of one of them is Rushmar. Rushmar will say, your time is gonna come to an end, old man. I can't wait to kill you and that QB brat. Naruto just smirks as he unleashes a couple shot clones in order to defend the village. Then he'll say, You can try, but you're going to fail. Orochimaru is invading the Leaf Village early, as he has gone pretty crazy because of how Naruto did him back and forth at death. Naruto is prepared, however, and sends his shot clones to defend the village. Orochimaru has decided to leave the Sand Village out of it in this canon as long as they don't interfere, though he actually planned to kill them as well because they know a bit too much. However, Naruto is just way too unstoppable. Naruto kills all the Sound Ninja grunts that he faces off against pretty easily. Then Naruto faces off against the Sound 4 and seeing the reddish pinkish hair girl that Ken told him about, Naruto realizes that this must be Tayuya. Naruto is then like, Gotta catch him all, gotta catch him all. Another one. As Naruto will save another girl so that he can add it to his error. I mean, just save her, just save her. The other dudes can't be saved, but Tayuki definitely can be saved. Anyways, Naruto will destroy the Sound 4, despite them reaching stage 2, when Naruto releases the win release Ho-Wo Jutsu. Although, of course, he makes sure to keep Tayu alive, but the rest of the boys, well, they're all dead. Anyways, Naruto seems to be on another plane of power in comparison to other Joni in the arena, and the Furo Kage is pretty impressed as well. Naruto will then face off against Orochimaru. He will look at him and say to him, Maybe you've finally gotten the message. Learn that you are far below me in terms of overall strength. Learn and embrace it. Embrace your weakness, for you are are not going to make it out of here alive. You were always behind my father when it came to strength, and you lost Hokage position to him. Your own teacher didn't want you to become Hokage, and I don't blame him, because you conducted yourself in a manner unbefitting of a Hokage, with your constant thirst for power and eternal life. You are nothing but a third-rate shinobi with a fourth-rate personality who has a weird obsession with young bodies. And what's funny, is like my father, I will become Hokage before you, and the cycle will repeat itself, as not only were you outclassed by my father, but you are now being outclassed by his son. Naruto gets into a stance. Rochimaru is 
extremely angry because this brat has insulted him for the last time. The Rush Worm will say, Don't you dare mock me! Naruto smiles as his psychological warfare is working. Naruto, after tapping into the first gate, will smack Orochimaru around some more, and he is just completely devastated as he cannot land a hit on this brat. Naruto will then continue to mock Orochimaru. You can't even get me to use 50% of my full power, yet you call yourself a Sanin? You call yourself someone who is more worthy of becoming Hokage than my own father? You're not intimidating. You are not strong. You are just weak. Orochimaru just gets angrier. Naruto, done with playing around, decides to use his Mangekyo. And Orochimaru will be hit by the Amaterasu flames. Orochimaru screams as the flames continue to burn him, until he uses his snake shedding technique. Orochimaru by this point has taken a lot of damage and Naruto seems to be ready to go for the kill. Orochimaru has now one thing on his mind. It's to run. He needs to get the hell out of there because Naruto is going to kill him. Naruto releases a lightning ball into the sky and as he says this he says you have hurt far too many people you do not deserve to be kept alive you have hurt your own student you have hurt your own subordinates and citizens you even tried to hurt my girlfriends worst of all you have hurt your own teacher which is a big no-no in the ninja world you have hurt so many innocent lives in your pursuit of power and i cannot allow that to go unpunished today is the day that you die. This is the last day you can impact the lives of other people with your twisted experiments. And this is the last time you will try to steal another person's body. Face the strongest lightning jutsu in the world. As the clouds gather, a lightning dragon slowly descends from the clouds, and Naruto has his hand up, ready to release it towards Orochimaru. This dragon will be the last thing you will see before you die. It's time. Lightning style. Kirin! Naruto fires off Kirin towards Orochimaru. Orochimaru sees his life flash before his eyes. However, there is one person that will take the blow instead of him. Kabuto. Kabuto uses a substitution jutsu and will switch himself with Orochimaru. Orochimaru notices right away what happened and just runs. He can't worry about Kabuto. He can't worry about anyone else. All he has to worry about is making sure he stays alive. Naruto kills Kabuto with the Kirin Jutsu, and as Kabuto is screaming and getting shocked and going through a very unpleasant experience, Kabuto thanks Orochimaru for giving him purpose. While Naruto is disappointed that he wasn't able to kill Orochimaru himself, he realizes he has severely crippled Orochimaru's quote-unquote empire. His sound four, his great subordinate, his army, almost everything is gone. He may have a couple experiments in our ninja in his back pocket, but it is probably far less than what Orochimaru had before. The village will praise Naruto, and the shooting exams will continue the next day. First matchup is Yugito versus Sasuke. And while the match is a bit even, once Yugito taps into that Two Tails chakra, Yugito will get the edge she needs and will finish off Sasuke with a punch. And we'll move on to the next round. Next up, Karin vs Shikamaru. Karin shows that she has good speed, and Shikamaru is not really able to go up against that. And after Karin lands a couple good hits on Shikamaru, the match has become pretty physical in her favor. Which will cause Shikamaru to do the logical thing, which is to surrender, which means she moves on to the next round. After that, it's Rockley vs Samui. She tries her best, but she gets destroyed by Rockley. Moving on. Next up, Sakura vs. Gara. This match is a bit competitive, as Sakura is able to use a couple Genjutsu that puts the battle in her favor. However, when Gara unleashes the sand, Sakura just cannot compete, and she is forced to surrender. Although, Naruto congratulates her on a job well done. Next up, Tamari vs. Shino. Just like when the original series, I forgot Tamari vs. Shino in the last part. Although, I think I did that a little bit on purpose. Yeah, I, yeah, I totally did that on purpose. Anyways, while I think Shino is pretty strong, Tamari just has the issue of being able to blow away Shino's bugs, and I just feel like that she has a bit of a massive edge in power in comparison to Shino, so she'll win and move on to the next round. Finally, we have Naruto versus Hinata versus Neji. Short order, Naruto just knocks up both Neji and Hinata and gets the W. Anyways, 
another battle royale happens with Karin, Gara, and Tamari versus Naruto. Naruto will just destroy all of them and we'll move on to the next round. Next fight is Yugito versus Rock Lee. This one is very competitive, but Yugito will take the edge since he's in Cherokee. And yeah, even if Rock Lee has trained during this one month time skip, I think Yugito just has the edge. But again, the good news is that Lee doesn't have his body destroy like the last time he faced off against the Tail Beast, so that's good for him, I guess. After tournament, Naruto will meet up with Tamara, Yugito, and Karin, respectively, and they'll all decide to communicate via letters, and they hope to see more of each other, which will probably cause something really beautiful to develop. Same can be said for Karin and Sasuke, who will also communicate via letters. In terms of promotions, Shikamaru will become a Chunin like in canon, while Naruto becomes a Chunin as well, with the promise of becoming a Jonin pretty quickly. Hiruz will then tell Naruto that he wants to retire as he is getting older, so he will request him and Dry to go after Tsunade, so she can become Okage, since Dry turned the position down. Naruto will also be able to take away the curse mark from Tayuya, and after a bit of talking, Tayuya can see that Naruto is not a bad dude at all. Naruto will promise to visit her and Ken when he can, and that they'll probably be released pretty quickly if they play their cards right, which they definitely will. Anyways, with the Search for Tsunade arc, there is no attack from Itachi and Kisame as they want no part of Naruto in this timeline. Instead, Itachi and Kisame decide to search for Orochimaru. But while that's going on, Dry and Naruto will eventually find Tsunade, and Tsunade will of course refuse like in canon, so Naruto will make a bet with her that if she can't beat him, she has to become Hokage. Tsunade, thinking this is going to be an easy matchup since Dry gave away that he is a Chunin, will get a wake up call as she is knocked out in one blow. After waking up, she will be told by Shizune that she was knocked out in one punch, and she is very shocked as how can a kid like this be so strong already? Naruto will answer with hidden genes and hard work. After a bit of getting to know her, Naruto will learn about Tsunade's past, and with some help from Hakuromo and Kurama, Naruto will tell Tsunade that if she's Okage, she's allowing the dreams of her brother and her lover to stay alive, and in a way, they accomplish them through her. And after a bit of deconstruction of her logic and for her argument, Tsunade is able to go for the same character development as in canon. Well, she still has her fear of blood, but she's gonna get over that pretty quickly. Naruto will then tell Tsunade that he is in one of those relationships as he gets to talk with her a bit more. And Tsunade will then say, if you break any of those girls' hearts, you'll be dead. Naruto then asks what could she do to him, which is a fair question considering that Naruto demolished her pretty easily, and Tsunade will say something worse than death, as she has this sinister smirk on her face, which scares Naruto, Hakuromo, and Kurama. Later on, Naruto and Kami will return to the village, and Tsunade will become Okage. Meanwhile, Itachi and Kisame find Orochimaru in a forest on the way to his village, and Orochimaru is scared because Itachi and Kisame could easily kill him. However, Itachi will say, Orochimaru, please come with us. We need your help. We pick up with Jiraiya giving Naruto a proposition of going on a train trip with him so he can travel and hone himself up a bit more. Naruto doesn't mind this as even though he is pretty OP at this point, more training is never a bad thing. And the good news for Naruto in this time is that the Akatsuki do not want to mess with him as they do not want to die. But they are not really staying idly by and waiting for Naruto to kind of go out and kill them in three years, especially since they are creating an old slash new member in Orochimaru. Speaking of that, Orochimaru says after Itachi asks for their help, wait, what? Itachi will say, as you know, Orochimaru, the goal for the Akatsuki is to one day grab all the tail beasts by taking them out of their respective Jinchuriki. However, as we are, we are not going to be able to do so. In fact, our plans could be destroyed before they even start. For you see, there is one person who can stop us and his name is very familiar to you at this point. Orochimaru gets a bit annoyed when thinking about his name, but finally says it. It's Naruto, isn't it? Atachi nods, saying, Yes, he absolutely destroyed you when you fought against him, and it is very likely that if me and Kisame fought him right now as we are, we would die. So right now, we need your help. You can join us, and if you succeed in helping us, you can have whatever you want. 
Rochmar thinks himself. I have nothing left to lose. I can help the Akoski get what they want, and I can potentially get what I want. I can get Sasuke, or even you, Itachi. Little does Rochmar know is that if he tries to go after Sasuke, Itachi will just Tosca Blade him. But Itachi would gladly give up his body if it means protecting Sasuke. Rochmar will agree to join forces with the Akoski, and then will say, I think there is one way we can get the advantage, and that is the reanimation jutsu that I have been developing. Naruto may be powerful, but there is no way he can stand up to many S rank ninja. No ninja can. I do need a couple more years to develop it, but once I'm done, Naruto will be finished, and I can get my revenge and a young Uchiha body. Orochimaru says with a grin. Itachi and Kisame nod while also trying to hold back some disgust. And then all three of them will head back to the Sound Village to see if there are any other resources the Akatsuki could use. However, little does Orochimaru know, Naruto is not a mere ninja, he is a god. Let's talk about Sasuke now. A big positive in this canon is that Sasuke never encountered Itachi in this canon, which means he is a bit calmer here and has no inkling of wanting to go with Orochimaru. Not that he could anyways because he does not have the curse mark. Plus, there's no sound 4 that wants to recruit him, so yeah, Sasuke is not leaving the village in his canon. Before Naruto decides to say, I am a head out and go on a freer train trip, Naruto decides to challenge Rock Lee to a Taijutsu match. They never really had a match that they wanted to have in the training exam, so Naruto decides to give Lee that match before he goes. They will be pumped as he has wanted to challenge Naruto for a while, and as they meet on the battlefield and are ready to spar, Lee will say, Naruto, I've been looking forward to this battle for a while. I saw you dominate the training exams, and while you are strong, in fact, you might be even stronger than Guy sensei I will defeat you right here, right now, with my Taijutsu. Because when it comes to Taijutsu out of our group, there is no one who can outclass me. Naruto will then say, You are a worthy opponent, Lee, and I believe you have a great future ahead of you. However, you shouldn't be so quick to say that you are the best Taijutsu user, especially when you can't even open up all eight gates. Rock will be surprised, but then will challenge Naruto to do so by saying, Brain it! The fight will begin, and then Naruto will go directly into the third gate, and Lee will realize that he is not kidding, as Lee's third gate it was a lot weaker in comparison to Naruto's third gate. While Lee tries to go into the third gate himself to match him, Naruto goes into fifth gate, and then Lee does so as well. Then Naruto then shows off his eighth gate. Lee will be very surprised and say, no way. It, it, you really can use the 8 gate. N Naruto, what have you done? Y you are gonna. Then Naruto will say, Don't worry. I can use the 8th gate without dying. It's related to me being a Chinchuriki. Lee will sigh in relief. And then Lee will say, Even if you have such incredible power, and even if I cannot beat you, I cannot back down. That is not my ninja way. The guy witnessing this in secret is amazed by the growth of Lee and is in awe at the overwhelming power of Naruto. As he continues watching this, Naruto holds back a little bit in his eighth gate form, but will still smash Lee into the ground and knocks him out. Afterwards, Naruto powers down and is very exhausted. Naruto notices this guy and then will say, You've trained a very splendid ninja. Haven't you, Guy? Guy will smile as tears fall down his face, as he is very happy someone like Naruto has acknowledged Lee like this. The next day, Naruto will have one fight with Sasuke before he leaves, and will smack him, but he will say to Sasuke that he has gotten stronger, and he's very impressed. Now it's time for the time skip. Well, what does Naruto get? Well, let's start off with him getting access to every single Kekke, Genkai, and Tota in existence. He also gets something called the Renegon. How did he get it? Well, one day during a train trip, he is training as Jiraiya does whatever. He just unlocks it out of nowhere. When Jiraiya sees Naruto as a Renegon, his eyes go out of his sockets. This is the second time he has seen a Renegon user in his lifetime. One of them was his former student Nagato, and now his current student, Naruto. Hagoromo and Naruto's mind will tell Naruto the truth about everything with Nagato being alive and being the leader of the Akatsuki, and also truth of how Nagato got the Renegon, 
but is very specifically instructed not to tell Dry this as he might do something reckless. Naruto will comply with this and will train his Renekon to his limits with the help of Hagoromo. Finally, Naruto will get Sage Mode like in canon, which will motivate Dry to complete his Sage Train, which means he's not going to rely on the frogs anymore. Finally, Naruto will go around and travel to each of the major villages, one being Kumo, which will allow him to speak with Yugito, Sami, and Karui, and officially add them to his Aram, while also being able to warn Yugito and everyone else about the coming threat of the Akatsuki. Finally, we'll see Naruto go to Sand Village and get on a couple of days with Tamari and kind of seal not there. Finally, we'll also see Naruto reach the Warfa Village and encounter a girl named Fu, which, after a bit of talking, Naruto add her as well. And finally, to Iwa, where Naruto adds Kurosuchi, because why not? Naruto got better game than me, and I am probably going to cry because of that. And for those of you who want to say that I wrote him that way, shut up. <laughs> Naruto also end up adding Shion, Shizuka, and Amaru, Koyuki, with Koyuki and Shizuka being age bended down to around Naruto's age, because, yeah, for good reason. Also, because of the fact that uh, you could make these characters younger and it would not impact the story at all since these are basically filler slash movie characters. Literally nothing changes. <laughs> the final girl Naruto meets in this timeline is Hotaru Alonf Utakata, and he'll give each of them a heads up as well. While Naruto trains Hotaru a bit, and Hotaru will start calling Naruto Master, which Let's just say the word master from Utar will take on a bit of a whole new meaning in the coming years. <laughs> Anyways, Naruto returns to the village since the time skip is now over, and we'll end up meeting Tamari, giving her a hug, and all the girls that Naruto has encountered and is now in a relationship with are pretty happy to see him, but that's irrelevant as he has the Akasuki to deal with. Tsunade will greet Naruto and will tell him that he will have all the joining of the village challenge him to a fight to see how powerful he's become, along with Tsunade herself and Jiraiya. Along with Old Man Hiruzen. Naruto's pretty excited, but will merely be disappointed by how easily he crushes this entire group of shinobi. Yes, even Old Man Hiruzen and Sage Monteraya. Again, Naruto is just that strong. Meanwhile, with the Akatsuki, Orochimaru and that group get ready for the hunt of the Jinchuriki. Orochimaru will say, It begins today. Our preparations and our training. It will all pay off. Let us hunt the Shinchuriki and Naruto Uzumaki. Orochimaru asks, shall we start our attack on the Sand Village, as he, Dator, and Sorcery are just outside the Sand Village. Along with them is his second Mizukage, who is going to help attack the Sand Village, as Orochimaru has now perfected the Edo Tensei. I mean, Naruto can't beat all these s rank shinobi, right? Well, Orochimaru's not going to be doing any fighting, but still. Free ass rank ninja, including the second Mizukage, there's no way he can win, right? Spoiler alert, it's not gonna go the way that they think it's gonna go. The trio is able to capture Gara, but when Naruto arrives, it does not go well for him, them at all. Naruto is able to seal up the second Mizukage, and will kill both Sorcery and Daedra pretty easily. Again, despite the Akatsuki's train and all their efforts, it doesn't matter in the face of a god, especially one with a freaking Renegon. Gara thanks Naruto, and then Naruto poofs up in smoke because it was actually a Shadow Clone. The real Naruto is busy training when he is able to obtain the memories of his clone, and is pretty happy that Gara is safe, but it was going to be a certainty anyways because of how powerful he is. Meanwhile, back with Yukoski, as Roshimaru returns back to base, looking to see hear the results of the battle with the second Mizukage, Sasori, and Daedara, Zets reports that they have all been killed, which shocks everyone on the Yukoski. The Yukoski now have to agree that they need to defeat Naruto first, because if he can defeat free S-Rank Shinomi pretty easily, just like Zetsu said, then they have no choice but to team up and get rid of him. It's their best shot, but little do they know, it's not gonna matter. Meanwhile, we're going to have Naruto, after he finishes up his train, will see Sasuke brooding somewhere. Naruto asks Sasuke, how are you doing? Sasuke will answer, he's doing pretty good, and he acknowledges that Naruto has grown quite a bit in power. Naruto smiles and says, yeah, I've pretty much grown a lot. I also heard from Lei Tsunade and Kakashi you were able to become a joining of like Neji. Sasuke nods in confirmation. Again, if there's anyone else from the Konoha 12 that could become a joining pretty quickly, it would be Sasuke. And Naruto's version who just so happened to earn joining after 
the Kaze Kage rescue mission. Sasuke still has the same feelings of wanting to kill Itachi and vengeance and being an avenger, but they've all mellowed down a lot, especially with a long distance girlfriend and Karin who he writes to, or he just visits to do Nar to giving him and Karin a Hiroshin kunai so that they could visit each other pretty easily. I guess you could say Naruto soon everything his power to make sure the ship sails, I guess. <laughs> Meanwhile, Orochimaru and Yakoski decide to invade the Leaf Village. They have an Edo Tensei army with them, including Madara, as Obito decided to give up his secret because if he doesn't beat Naruto, he has no way to complete his plans. So, it's either you give up your secret and pride, or you die. Clearly, Obito chose the best option. As the army approaches the Leaf Village, Naruto meets them and the battle begins. Hagurum will explain to Naruto who Tobi is that he's actually not moderate but he's really Obito and the entire story behind that, enough so Naruto can understand what the heck is going on. Which kinda makes Naruto want to save Obito and also save the hearts of Nagato and Konan since in this timeline Hagurum has told him about what happened with them as well. Naruto also got Sasuke as well to fight with him or to be more exact Sasuke will go face off against Itachi, so that's going to be an interesting battle to say the least. Obito will say, Well, Ninetales Shinshuriki, you have proven to be a foreign inside of all of us for a long time, but that ends now. Then in comes Madara who reveals himself, and he will say, I have heard many things about you, Ninetales. You are the only obstacle in my way to stop all of my plans. And while I would have loved to have had you as a rival in my previous life, I must stop you and take the Nine Tails away, so I can revive the Ten Tails. Naruto will say, You are mistaken. I will now show you guys that all that effort, bring back Orochimaru to your side, bring back all these legendary Kage from all the other villages, bring back Madara, trying to bring back the Ten Tails, all of those plans. They're all a waste. All of your plans die here. Naruto look at Konan and the Paths of Pain, knowing that those are again dry students and wanting to save them, decides to save them for last. He goes into full power, unleashing his Sage 6 Passman, which he recently unlocked along with the Renegon, and will attack the Akaski. He blitzes a bunch of the Akaski, including a Edo Tensei, Deidara, and Sasori, and then all of a sudden, a Hashirama and Tobirama that were previously not sealed in this timeline appear as well, and then Naruto will seal them up very quickly as well. Naruto seals up Kabuto, and then he will decide to save Orochimaru for last as one of his last kills, because he wants to make him suffer for all this desecration of life. Naruto kills Kisame with a line blade for the heart and will come face to face against Madara. However, before they can have a clash of their own, Kakazu and Hidan try to interrupt it, but Hidan loses his head and Naruto completely destroys Kakazu, meaning that Hidan is just ahead that Naruto just crushes. Naruto then will go face off against Madara and after a very long hard fought battle as both sides continue to clash with their wood cell, fire juice, and everything else, Madara for the first time in his life seems to be overwhelmed. He was not nearly as overwhelmed as he was against Hashirama. Madara then realizes that he's not facing off against some ordinary shinobi, he's facing off against a god. Madara will ask, how are you this strong? Naruto will say, because I am the new Sage of Six Paths, these true seeking orbs, my Rinnegan, my wood style, all of the power I possess, all of it is a result of me being the reincarnation of the Sage of Six Paths. Don't believe you. That's impossible, Madara denies. Naruto then says, I guess you're gonna need to hear from the Sage himself. Naruto touches Madara, and Madara is then face to face with the Sage of Six Paths in Naruto's mindscape. Sage himself will confirm everything Naruto is saying, and Madara's left speechless because for so long, as he is talking with the sage, he learns that he has been played a fool by Black Zetsu. As Madara looks at Zetsu with scorn and rage, Naruto beats him to it, killing Zetsu instantly as he tries to get away. Madara then says, All this time, all this effort, it was for nothing. I would have had many, many people just become Zetsu. All of those people 
would have been used as fuel for Kaguya. I would have been turned into a vessel for her body. Naruto suddenly says, I'll do this out of respect for you, because I think the dead should be allowed to rest. He then turns to Orochimaru, cancel the Edo Tensei. Why should I? I could can easily... Then Madara all of a sudden fires a great fire annihilation jutsu at the snake, and then Madara looks at him with a very harsh glare, demanding him to release him. Orochimaru will be forced to comply. Madara will be released from the Edo Tensei and will thank Naruto before disappearing. Naruto then turns to Obito and then says, Unmask yourself, Obito. Obito is shocked and will unmask himself, and then Naruto says, I guess it's time you learn the truth as well. Naruto tells Obito everything that Madara did, and Obito just puts his head down. Obito feels like everything that he's done and everything that he was looking forward to was just all a waste. He decides to want to let Naruto kill him, and then Naruto grants him the wish as he feels like it is the only way for him to atone. Naruto then turns to Konan and Nagato and says, I'm sorry that you two have suffered so much due to Obito and Danzo, but I cannot agree with your methods to attain peace. Nagato will talk about the cycle of hatred and stuff, and then Naruto counters with, a world where everyone has gone through the same pain and are afraid is not really true peace. And he also says that he will attain true peace without any suffering or any pain because he is a sage of six paths and he will finish what he started. Nagato eventually relents and then after Naruto is able to learn Nagato's true biolocation, Naruto heals Nagato's legs. Nagato is shocked and asks why he did that but Naruto wants him to stay alive so he can remain the leader of the Rain Village. That way it can maintain some form of order. Nagato will ask if there's anything he can do to repay him for all this, and then Naruto says yes, be the best leader the Rain Village has ever seen, and to also talk to Jiraiya. And with that, Vyakoski is finally disbanded. Meanwhile, Naruto goes back to see how Sasuke is doing against Itachi, who separated from the main group and fought in their own little area. Sasuke is using his Rinnegan at EMS, which Naruto gave him basically through a forced evolution. And with that, plus the fact that Itachi is still sick, Itachi dies pretty easily due to Sasuke's winning the Sasano battle, and Sasuke can finally put his past behind him. Naruto will congratulate Sasuke, and both of them will head back to the village. Another big change here, by the way, is that Kaki never appears, and even if she did, she would probably lose to Naruto. Naruto will then be greeted by his girls, and then there's a massive wane and stuff, and let's just say Naruto put his 28 inch to use. After that, we have Sasuke and Karin's wedding, which goes pretty well themselves, and they have a kid of their own, and... Finally, with Toneri, that stuff gets pretty snuffed out pretty quickly by Naruto because, well, one, Toneri's story is pretty irrelevant because Naruto does have a knot in this timeline, and two, Toneri would still lose to Naruto. Danzo tries to go for a coup d'etat in order to become Okake, but that ends at Naruto's hands. And finally, at the age of 20, Naruto becomes Hokage, which would probably make him the youngest Hokage ever. I'd have to double check how young Minta was though. And good news for Jiraiya ex Tsunade shippers, Jiraiya gets Tsunade after Tsunade finally confesses her feelings for him, which means our favorite pervert finally wins. And in the future, Naruto has like 17 to 18 kids with all his wives, and well, even in the face of Osuski's like Ishiki and Jigen or all of those guys, Naruto will still develop to the point where he will probably be able to fight those guys. Although, if you want to see how those fights turn out, let me know if you want me to go into Boruto. Because who knows, it, those fights could actually be really, really interesting considering how strong those guys are. Let me know in the comments below. But for now, this is the end of this critically acclaimed series that was remastered. Because as we all know, all good things must come to an end. I hope you guys enjoyed the finale of this what if. I hope you guys enjoyed the series overall. Thank you all for watching. Shout out to our patrons and my Twitter our patrons. Get to well a nice slasher. If you want to watch the shots like these, get my Patreon, which is linked in the description. If you want to, you can subscribe. You don't have to, but it lets me know I'm doing a good job and it, it feels pretty cool. You get it? <laughs> Finally, if you have any other content you want me to do, let me know in the comments below. And now that is about it for this video. This has been your boy, the MSA Sound of Peace or Ha. Shout out to you for in this video and bye bye. Peace. Cutie outro.